and welcome to the Bad Squirrel Speaks. Today is Tuesday, January 8th, and this is episode 46, I think. Hi, how are you? I hope you're all doing well. I hope you had a lovely weekend. Um, hello, new viewers. How are you? I'm Amy Beth, also known as the Bad Squirrel and Ravelry and Thurk. If you'd like to find me someplace in the world, that's a good place to start. And number 10 of you, shut up. I just want to say a special giganto, gimundo, fat squirrel sized greeting and hello and thank you nesses to everybody who commented so nicely on the last two boards uh, for the last two episodes. So many nice things. I, don't, I didn't respond to them all because I just felt like I was being, my head was going to just get bigger and bigger and bigger. But just so many nice things. And I just want to thank you all. I love your kind faces. I love kind people. I love you. Thanks. Um, oh, thank yous also to Sarah. Hi, Sarah. Thank you. Sarah donated her real live hard earned post holiday apocalypse dollars to the podcast. She's better pressure than I am. <laughs> um, so I have lots to talk about this week. Um, I don't know if I can donate shenanigans because, well, quite frankly, I don't think there were any. I think my life was totally shenanigan free this weekend. Oh, darn it. I meant to show you. Okay, I'm going to pause for just a second. I'll be right back. So, I'm back. But actually, this is a trick because I'll be back when I'm really meant to be back later. But I'm putting this in here because this is a natural break and, you know, whatever. <laughs> so, basically, it's like three hours later. But, um... A while ago, I remember that I needed to tell you something else, which was very exciting, and I needed to confirm all that information and whatnot, so here it goes. We are totally close to a thousand members. So, surprise for you! I was contacted yesterday by Erin of Bling Your String. That's her Etsy shop, Bling Your String. Uh, she sells gift, gift bags. She sells project bags and stitch markers and whatnot. So you can go check it out. Um, but she is introducing a um, club of, a bag of the month club in her shop. So she, with her generous face, has totally decided to donate to one to me. And then guess what? What do you? So when we get to a thousand members. I'll totally put a thread out about like how exciting this is. And I'll include all the information there too. But in case you want to check it out because you're in patient pants like me. You can go over to her shop. It's called Bling Your String. It's on Etsy, and I'll put the link down there. Um, but basically, there are different, like, flavors that you can choose. There's cat lovers, dog lovers, in the garden, hot cuppa, I'm forgetting one, critters, cute critters. And um, so you can get all the information there about what is in the subscription, how much it costs, how much the shipping is. It's very affordable, by the way. Aaron's amazing. Um, but you'll get a project bag and matching stitch markers once a month for three months. How exciting is that? Plus extra goodies. How exciting is that? So you can go check it out or you might win one. She's doing pre-orders right, pre -orders, pre -orders right now. Um, and then her first shipment will go out mid-February, I believe she said. Um, you can order after that if you want. It'll just come out when the month comes out. Does that make sense? There are a limited number of options, of spots. There are a limited, limited number of options as well. But there are a limited number of spots. So go check it out. Also, if you haven't joined the Rebel Club, do so. Then you can win a prize. Um, so yeah, we're like at 9.50-ish right now. So sign up. So you win a prize. And yeah, so now we'll go back to the original cut about the headlamp. Bye. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> so this is the random thing that I forgot to bring over that I was going to show you. I was actually doing two random product reviews this week, but I think I'm only going to do one because um, the other one will take longer and there's so much to talk about. But I'll just give you a sneak peek for next week. I'm totally going to give a random product review of shoes. <laughs> Clearly, and their fitnessy shoes. Clearly, that's what the Fat Knitting Podcast should have about. It should have a shoe review, right? Makes perfect sense, right? I have a theory and I wrote it down, so I'll remember her next week of why it is appropriate in some way. <laughs> but this, last week, um, as some of you commented, which was very cute. I had made a comment that my daughter was coming over and the lighting was changing. Oh, this, I hope Blip chooses this one because I could not look better right now. Um, 
<laughs> They're still for the week. Um, oh, last week my daughter came over because she was at her light flashed, and I was like, oh, sorry, you know. So this is what she was wearing. This is actually one of my Christmas presents from my dear husband because he has one of these. And I was like, dude, give me one. But I said it nicer. So, okay. So I think you remember, you probably have, okay, on Thanksgiving, I was driving to my family's in Cincinnati, driving home. Well, driving home was too dark to knit in the car and I was totally bummed. Some of you put up, pointed out there was this product, and now I can't remember what it's called, but it's like a little neck light you wear around your neck, which was very cute. But then my husband bought this home like three days later and I was like, Whoa. because in my head, I'd always wanted a headlamp for the car for knitting. But at the same time, I knew that I would have to like look down to illuminate my, I am so beautiful. Can you even just hold back your rapture? Um, so I was like, I have to hold my head down and that would not be comfortable. Are you ready? <gasps> it moves. This part totally rotates basically 180 degrees. If you just wanted to shine a light in your own eyes for, because you're a sadist or something. I don't know. Masochist. Wrong thing. So there's a light. It's super bright. You can tell, right? You can do, and if you want to, and you're in the car, red light. Or you could just be George P. Funkadelic. George and the All-Star Funkadelics. George P. Clinton and the All-Star Funkadelics. Red light. You can do that. Oh my gosh, it's the worst show ever. But anyway, so, woo, sorry, that was kind of great looking. But anyway, so I just want to show you that because it was pretty cool and I was pretty excited about it and it's a pretty cheap thing you can got, get anywhere. And my husband didn't complain how much it costs, so I'm thinking 10 -ish. <laughs> It came with batteries. So anyway, random product review. Um, which I guess I should have saved to the end, but then I would have forgotten. It says we're still kind of doing thank yous. <gasps> thank goodness. Thank you, Corey. Look what Corey sent me. Corey, I rock knits is the most generous person on the face of the earth. She's crazy nice. <laughs> she saw these and I wanted to show them into the package before I ripped them open like a wild wildebeest. They're by Lantern Moon and they're their stitch markers and they are full on stinking tiny squirrels even with the black eye embroidered in. Can you, what? And acorn accompaniments. And they're very nice rings. They're very fat and don't have any gaps in them. So they won't stitch a woolly on anything. So there's three acorns and three squirrels. Lantern Moon, you're crazy. Awesome sauce. Corey, I rock it. You're crazy, you're awesome sauce over your ness. Like a sous chef, sous chef, chef of awesome crazy sauce. Anyway, it's still really early. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm not sorry. I will continue to be this discombobulated forever. So let's not even pretend. Okay, so. Knitting. My first finished object is the girl from Nantucket Hat by the beautiful, talented Laura Linneman of the Knit Girls fame. Isn't it pretty? This is for my friend who has a smaller head, but it still stretches to fit my ginormous head. This is the um, the yarn I used. Isn't it pretty. Of course, the stitch pattern is not uh, immediately like it's not as beautiful in a in a tw in a variegated -y, twisty twisty yarn, but I just love this yarn so much, and I wanted to give it to my friend. So this is Mountain Colors River Twist. I don't know what the colorway is. I've had it in my stash for a minimum of four years. It has not had a ball band for approximately that much time. So yeah, so pretty. Love the pattern. Thanks, Valeria. Thanks, Laura. Can't say anything else about it. Totally enjoyable. Super quick. First, when I looked at the chart, I was all like, this is more thinky than I want it to be. Because it's a, it's not a very wide repeat, but it's a long rip, it's a tall repeat. And I was like, meow. But it's not. It's just like anything. Just look at it for a minute, and then you're like, oh, I gotta get out this work. And then move on. And then the next thing I had to show you, it's also for podcaster fame, Melsky of the Single Handed Knits podcast. This is her, I reverse directions are so confusing on this thing. This is her intersections break. 
she's so cute on her little podcast. She was all talking about like, don't stress out people. Just use your little finger to open up the fancy little cable and it'll be pop up here. Block it. Don't be afraid. That would work better if I hadn't used the most insanely thick yarn ever. <laughs> this is, I wanted mine though to be, cause like, hello, Nelsky's in Hawaii. Hate her for a second. And love her back. Um, she's in Hawaii. So she doesn't need a super warm hat. She just needs a flashy trendy hat, right? Because she's fancy like that. And she's fancy little children. Um, but I wouldn't mind to be warm and ski appropriate. Because I ski so often. But you know what? In the vein thereof. So I used some hand spun that I have. Also, I just didn't have any of the right yarn for this hat. I don't know what's wrong with me. I need more stash. Hello. Um, on hand. Because, I, again, I don't, whatever. It was like a worsted weight. I had a double. And it's hand spun Roms, Romsney. It's not Romney. I lied. It's a uh, Coopworth Border Lester Cross. I say Leicester. I say Lester. Thoreau. Thoreau. You know what I'm talking about. Make fun of me if you'd like. Um, if that makes you feel better about yourself, go ahead. <laughs> So anyway, yay, that's super cute. It was super easy, very fast. Zoom, zoom, zoom. Except I, I can't even pretend that I can do this on camera. <laughs> so there it is. It's very cute. Thanks, Mel. Third finished object is also a hat. But I can't put it on my head because it's for a kid. Are you ready? I'll show you the picture of the pattern first. This, I have a friend who has a daughter who is one year younger than mine. I was at this child's birth. She was born in laughter. It was awesome. This is a woman's second child. And really, there was a funny joke. She laughed. Ta-da, baby! <laughs> it was pretty exciting. So this is the Oink, a piggy hat by Lisa Wilt. And it is a free pattern on Ravelry. I'm sorry, you see my sloppy handwriting over it. So the child of the friend wanted a piggy hat. And my friend was like, before her birth, the child's birthday, was looking on Etsy and was just like, I don't like any piggy hats. So I was like, oh, dude, I'll totally knit you one. Okay. Okay. So I started off with some yarn that I had. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just going to fidget with myself all the 45 minutes. I really apologize. Um, I actually do. I would like to not be that person, but I am. Um, so she wanted the piggy hat, didn't like piggy hats. Oh, I started with some yarn that I dyed that was like fingering weight because that's all I had. Held double. And it just, it just didn't feel warm. You know what I mean? Like it's a, the beautiful superwash merino, but it's for pretty, not for warms. You know what I mean? It doesn't have any halo around it. Like even when you hold a double and knit it on, I was knitting on fives, like you could just and the air would go through it. You know what I mean? It just, I felt like it was not hatty enough. Now they live in Kentucky, so it doesn't get terribly cold there, but whatever. I just didn't like it. So then my daughter and I went on an expedition to Joanne Crafts because they were having 25% off their yarn and then 25% off of that. So I was like, well, okay. Ta da! <laughs> How? ridiculous is that it's and it's got the ties oh on the pattern she has a very cute little thing that um the ties are actually like curly cued like piggy tails here you can see it right here i think they're curly cued like piggy tails my i couldn't get that to happen because the pattern is written for worsted and this is like super bulky i'll show you what it is because of course my child wants one i need to knit cute stuff in the dark because or when she's asleep because ugh, this is getting old at first, she just wanted the hat part, and I was like, sweet, that's super easy. And then she wanted the piggy part, too. I was like, Pfft. not that it was harder, but it took like an extra 20 minutes. <laughs> I see. But this is Lion Brand Quick and Cozy, which is this crazy chenille yarn of insanity. Oh, there was also a specification that this could not itch at all, because child is that way. Um. So anyway, it's a super bulky. You get 55 yards. I had... Did I put a little bit left? I had about this much left. I mean, yeah, I used almost all of it to do this hat, which is finished in, um, 18 inches around, plus a little bit. Oh, the picture in the the, the 
pattern has something that look like safety eyes on them, but those safety eyes have a post. So I don't know. I don't know what they did. Maybe they put a little backing on it, but I was afraid for a little kid, even with like a backing on it would be enough to be. So even though it's less cute, I just use black buttons, which by the way, were totally just the buttons, the extra buttons off a pair of slacks. <laughs> I didn't think my beautiful Pima tuning buttons would look cute on this. <laughs> anyway, I keep holding up because it's just so stinking cute. And by the way, if you need a quick project, I think this yarn, I could be lying at this moment. I think this yarn was like 850 a skein, which is a lot, but one skein makes a hat. And let me just discuss, cast on 36 stitches. How awesome is that? Again, the pattern, I basically use the pattern for the, the nose and the theory and the ears um, because it is written for worse weight. But for this one, you just cast on 36 and then do your decreases. 36. It's a lightning hat. And then it's super cute, right? Right. But yeah, for the win. So I hope she likes it. If she doesn't, I'm asking for it back. <laughs> She's a very cute kid. But so anyway, so... um. So yeah, if you do it with this, basically I just did again, I cast on 36 for the hat and then went back and did um, uh, the not the ear flaps I did were nine wide with six in between them. That should be enough to get you going. If you need specifics, I can tell you. But The nose I did exactly as written. So proportionately, it's much larger, but I enjoy it. Actually, that's not even true. Two thirds the size of normal. Because yes, two thirds. So I made the nose and the ears two thirds the size that was written. How fun is that? Thirty six stitches. I mean, I'm a, I love natural yarn. I love the real wool. Thirty six stitches. Awesome. Anyway, oh, I have a finished work, spinning work in progress. This is roving that I spun, and it is roving by the beautiful Boutros Babe of Boutros Babe of Highland Handmaids, and this is her predatory colorway in her superwash BFL base. I remembered all the things. I totally wrote down my yard, and I it was not very much. It was like 200 yards, so super quick. But let me just discuss. So when this was on the bobbin after my singles, I was like, whatever, they're singles. Who knows what they're going to be? But when I put it, when I plied it on the bobbin, I was really like, I messed this up. I was just like really bummed about it. Like this doesn't look like anything. Not Heather at all. I'm just like, I failed on this one. And then I took it off the bobbin and washed it. And now I love it. It's so schmooshy. And it's totally fun colors. Well, that's probably pretty accurate actually. So it is very floofly. It's like a bulky weight. Um, but yeah, I totally dig it. I didn't care if it's the million yards or not. I dig it all puffy style. And um, I do naturally. I don't. Confessions. I've been spinning a year now. I can't spin worsted at all. I need a class, I guess. I don't know. I'm doing something wrong. I can't spin worsted. I stink at it. It hurts my hands. I can't do it fail. So if you're ever questioning how I spin something, unless I specifically say otherwise, I almost 100% of the time spin with like a short backward draw. So it's a woolen spinning technique. Um, it's where you let the twist do the work. Basically you let the twist, you don't, you, instead of holding it out of your fiber, you let it into the fiber. And then just what your job is, is to regulate how much fiber it's grabbing up at a time. That makes sense. So really this hand is just like pinching, like, Oh, too much twist. Hold on for a second. No, let go. So, so I kind of go between short backward draw and long draw. Like I'm not like the super cool long draw where you just, this hand, you could just sit on it or drink a beer and you're just like, those people are awesome. I'm not there yet. <laughs> Every time I do it, I'm like, ah, ah, the whole time. So <laughs> I do use this hand to like, pinch off like, okay, stop, twist. And I pull, draft this back and then I let go. So that's how I spin almost everything. It's just some, for some reason that's what works for me. Most people learn to win, spin worsted. It hurts my hands. I can't do it. I'm obviously doing something wrong, but I don't, that's okay. I like what I'm getting. 
I love to see the worsted spinning. I love how fat it looks and like how it's all. I love the way it looks, but I got straight hair. I want curly hair. You know how it is, but I'm okay with my straight hair sometimes. So that was my finished spinning object. I have spinning works in progress, which were almost finished objects, but then I slowed down because I was being a crazy face. This is from Diabolical. It's her for the love of pants colorway. Love of pants. Um, and it's 100% mixed BFL wool. It's the wool that um, the BFL that's like uh, naturally got different colors in it. And then over dyed. So this is what I have left. This is about half an ounce. Isn't that pretty? This I have one. This is two ounces on a bobbin. Well, 1.9 ounces on a bobbin. And then I have another 1.9 ounce. Well, then I have the other bobbin is still in progress, so I didn't bring it. So hopefully this is a little bit finer than I've been spinning lately. <laughs> I would like to get like a sport weight occasionally, or again, eventually I would like to spin for socks, but that's a three ply fingering weight. I need to, I think I need new bobbins. What do you think? That's what my new theory is. It's not my fault. It's my bobbins, right? Totally. Uh, my smallest uh, ratio is 7.5 to 1, which technically is for a medium yarn. So maybe it's not totally my fault. I don't know. <laughs> so that's my new theory. I'm like, oh, I need new bobbins, clearly. Um, because my bobbin, Louette, the new bobbins have three ratios. These are the old bobbins. This, this bobbin is probably like 30 years old. Um, and they were just made the smaller ratio on one side, the bigger one on the other. See the groove for the band. The new one is more like the shocked or whatever bobbins, where it actually has like the three on one end. And you just grade it down. Oh my gosh, speaking of spinning and bobbins and stuff. Thank you. Sadie from Yarnivore Podcast, who bump, jumped on our boards really quickly when I was all like, why are my bobbins clanking like there's a baseball card in the spokes? She's like, dude, she said it much nicer than this. She's like, dude, you need to wax your bobbins. <laughs> it's like, oh. So I had a total, that could have been a shenanigan. I don't know why I didn't mention that. I had a total, like as soon as she said that, I was like, oh, and I just took my wheel and put it on my big kitchen counter and lubed it up. So I washed it, of course. I did the, the Knitting Blooms wheel washing tutorial with Clark and DM. And I think that's right. And um, so, yeah, I washed that. And I had all of the wood things in sock. How cool is that? I was so excited. I was like, oh, my gosh, I totally have Murphy's oil soap. And, oh, my gosh, I totally have that beeswax stuff that you're supposed to put on wood, like, for your cabinets and stuff. I was like, oh, my gosh, I feel so prepared. I didn't have nearly enough white cloths. I was very jealous of all their white cloths they were using. But that's okay. <laughs> They don't have to be white. It's just fun to look at. Um, so I totally did that. And that was very good. It made a huge difference. There is no slight squealing or anything like that. I just kept thinking that the squealing was because I didn't have enough. The, 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 the flyer rod that goes through here was like needing oiled. And I kept oiling it. It's like, is that making a difference? Hi, dummy. That means it's not what's wrong with it. Um, so she suggested, again, to oil my bobbins. And actually, they could probably use another coat. They were probably very, very knob deserty with their dried outedness. I mean, I know how each, I have to lose lotion like 70 times a day. Not really. Because I use Wolf Farms, and I just use it once after showering. But I don't, this is still in the same dry, dry house environment and it needs more care than I've been giving it. Shame on me. So that's the spinning and the knitting. Works in progress. Um, I started a new sock. It is the, and I'm going to say it wrong. So I, I, that sh I don't even think I need to announce that anymore. Like, let's just assume I'm going to say stuff wrong. Okay. It's the sh sh shirt golf, shirt to golf, whatever. 
it's a free pattern. <laughs> I'm sure if I had done research, I would have realized that it's like Norse for awesome sock or something. Sure to Gall by Alice. Dang it. Alice U. So that's what it looks like. It's a freebie. It has a beautiful, just a nice texture that's very, oh, it's, I think I'm going to knit this one a lot. It's just got right twists, so it has like a little bit of a carry, like a cable, but you don't have, you just do it with the twisting, like you knit into the back and then you knit into the front kind of thing. Like you knit two together and then knit the, the second stitch again and then pull them off and they've twisted. It's that thing, right, left twist. And, oh, I'm using my Another Crafty Girl, no. Sorry. Yes. Yes, that's right. Um, it is another crafty girl, right? It's Punky. It's another crafty girl. Yes. And this is her um, her sock. I don't have the tag. I know. I'm such a fool. Um, but it's, this is her Prince of the Cosmos colorway. So it is a reference to Katamari, which is a video game where you roll stuff up. I've talked about it before when I bought it for my birthday. I'm finally using it. And this is it. How stinking pretty is that? I mean, actually, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna do something crazy and turn on an autofocus for just a second and see what happens. Will it do it? Will something happen? Nope, didn't like that. Hang it off. <laughs> Sorry. Anyway, it's a very there we go, I'll just do it manually. That's how I roll people. Um so yeah, isn't that pretty? Here's the back of it in case you were curious. There's my waist churn for the afterthought heel because I love an afterthought heel. It's super easy and it fits well. Why? This one it works. So yay for that. Um, okay, that's all of the knitting. No, that's not true. I'll just, I don't know why I'm geeching on this because quite frankly, wall pole. But I finished the second sleeve and it has now been joined into the round for the yoke. So yay, it's a big sweater mass. And this is the point where you think, oh my gosh, this is way too short. <laughs> or at least that's what I do. <laughs> Don't freak out. It's easy to make things longer. It's much more of a pain in the neck to make them shorter. At least I think it is. So Yay! It's a bunch of Swift Fox Beaver Slide Dry Goods two ply socks knit on uh, now I'm on twos. I was on threes, now I'm on twos. Sometimes I like to knit the yoke of a sweater a little bit. Just again, my difference between twos and threes is very minimal. But sometimes I like to knit the yoke just a smidge tighter because it gets more stretch. Because it's got the whole bottom of the sweater pulling on it. Does that make sense? Makes sense in my head. Um so yeah, yay! And then I have a bit of shameless self-promotion that I'll do later. But so yeah, this is my product bag. And my entire size 54 inch bust sweater fits right in there. So, what else? Okay, now I have some stuff. Well, I have a stuff. Oh, did I just have one stuff? Yes, okay. Oh, I totally, I totally got some Gale's art, which I should show you. What? Maybe I'll show you next week. I'll show you next week. I got Gale's art. I says, can it along? Um, a few weeks ago, Susan of Desert Vista Dye Works had put a call out. She's doing, I guess she's going to do like, she does inspiration for each month for her new stripe, her new colorways. And so I think this year she's going to do like different countries. So the first one she picked was Russia. I'm totally on a Russia kick. Oh, you notice that? I'm totally on a Russia kick. But she put it out there and I was like, oh. <gasps> I know exactly what it should be. And she picks like four or five. And then if you win, it's just a hair. If you win, it's so weird to look at yourself for this long. I apologize, it's great stuff. Anyway, if you win, then you also win, a if you win like the inspiration, you win a skein of yarn. So what I suggested, People had beautiful pictures up of like ice caves and like all this gorgeousness. And of course the beautiful Moscow, the domes and stuff, which are all gorgeous. But this is a book that my daughter and I really enjoy. It's called Rachenka's Eggs. I think we got it at like a library book, book sale or maybe, I don't know, I got it used because it's old. 
but it's called Rachenka's Eggs. It's about this lovely little lady who is called, referred to as Babushka in the book. And this is actually the photograph or the image that Susan decided to use for her yarn inspiration. And she makes these beautiful Ukrainian eggs. I did check. It is in Russia. It's not Ukrainian. I checked. <laughs> I did the research. Don't call me out on it. Um, according to the internets. <laughs> Anyway, she finds this goose that has been shot by hunters. She believes, and oh my gosh, isn't this pretty? She's out feeding the reindeer because that's how she rolls. <sighs> and look at all of her layers. Oh, Eastern European women, I love you. Anyway, so she, this, this goose falls because he's been shot by a hunter. Your child always gets a little sobby right here. Not sobby, but why would they do that? <laughs> so she nurses the, the, the goose back to health. Well, the goose knocks over all of her beautiful eggs she's been constructing for the fair. Still a goose. And then magic happens. The goose totally lays her. See if she was the puppy. She was blowing out her egg yolks. But then the goose, of course, and oh, so beautiful illustrations. I love them so much. The goose lays her beautiful eggs so that she can take them to the to the fair. And here she is examining the quilt that's going to be the prize. And of course she wins the quilt. How exciting is that? And then Rachenka, who's the goose, leaves her one, has to go away, of course, because that's how stories work. Because she, of course, selflessly gives Rachenka a, a beautiful quilt to sleep in, too. But then Rachenka leaves her one egg, her final egg. And you know what's going to happen, right? Spoiler alert! Ta-da! So anyway, my kid and I love this book. It's one one that she's always liked, which I love that about her, by the way. Um, <laughs> but then Susan, who has a genius face, was like, oh, there you go. There's some self-striping inspired by Rachenka's eggs. So, oh, how exciting is that? I got, I will admit, I got completely weepy at the thought. I love Nick so much. I got completely weepy at the thought. Sorry, Babushka, I can't work this. I got completely weepy at the thought that I, I get to make socks. These are going to be like the prize socks that I never wear, probably. But I totally get to make socks. And I will forever have my Richenka's eggs memories. <laughs> so Susan, thank you so much for the yarn. Thank you even more for that. Oh my gosh, it makes me weepy just thinking about it. I don't know why, but it totally touches me. <laughs> so yay for her. Also... Do I need, oh, this was in my Mark my Play, so I'll just show you. This came. Peace Lee sent me their beautiful new colorways for the fall. Or their new colorways for 2013. I don't know. Peace Lee, I love your faces. Look at this one. Isn't this fun? It's called like Marigold or something. Now, I will tell you, their new bases are slightly different than their old ones. I think they have less. What does it say? Oh, yes. They're only 10% mohair, I think. I think. Yeah, I think the new bases are only 10% mohair instead of 30. So if you have a mohair weirdness, you may want to try out one of their new ones. Their new colors. They don't actually have bases, but they're new colors. So, or you can just call the lovely people there at Peace Lease and they'll help you out. Okay, so that's all of the real show. If you would like to stick around for shameless self-promotion, please do so. <laughs> if not, to love you. So I, of course, have my beautiful sweater bag that I love. I made it for me because I saw this fabric and had to make something with it. And I didn't think that my family would be okay if I made curtains with it. Even though, how awesome would these curtains be? But my house is not that fancy, so I don't think I'd get away with it. But how awesome would these curtains be? <laughs> but so anyway, so I saw it and I thought, oh, okay, I'll make a project bag with it. But I have to make a big one because look at how giant the print is. So that's how it became my sweater project bag. It was just because I needed this fabric. And it would be better if it were useful and not just like a pillow that's going to get 
thrown everywhere. So that's why I made them. Or that's why I made mine. And then some people really liked them. And so I thought, well, I can make you guys some too. So I did. Um, I actually have eight of them. They are zipper. Sorry, finger getting away. Here. They are a zipper top. They are fully lined and they are lined. They are not interfaced. So, um, you know, like your smaller product bags that sit up without even anything in them. That, so they have interfacing in them. I like that for the smaller project bags. I did a test on this fabric. This is actually decorator fabric and it's much heavier weight than like your, your high quality quilters cottons that you use for, this is not a high quality quilters cotton, by the way, but the actual real bag makers use the high quality quilters cotton. Um, it's a lot heavier than that. Um, and I also used a lining that is considerably heavier than that. It's like a, I don't want to say it's a duck, but it's a not, it's a very heavy cotton. So I used the interfacing and I just didn't like the way it looked. So I made mine without interfacing. So I made these without interfacing because I don't like a stiff sweater bag anyway, because then when you put stuff, lots of times the sweater bag gets very full versus the smaller product bag, which usually doesn't. So when they get very full and they're heavily interfaced, then they start to crease and pucker in weird ways, which I don't care for. So that's just me, but I made some, so there you go. Um, so they are fully lined. They don't have any pockets or anything in them because I just find that I don't use those in the bigger bags. Cause then you're like constantly in here. Where, where is it? I can't find it. So yeah, that's pretty, oh, I want to be making. So, um, so yeah, that's it. So one side is guaranteed to be have a bird on it. One side may not because of the giant print or one side may have like not a perfect bird on it. So this is the right side. And then this is the wrong side. So it has like, it still has a bird on it, but this one's like, oh my gosh, stop sitting on my face. So I have eight of them. If you would like to have one of them, I can make that happen for you. Um, this is hard to do, sorry. Um, I'm not the most perfect seamstress in the world. Uh, these are very heavy quality. Oh, that's another thing. I didn't put like a loop or anything on them because lots of times your sweater bags are considerably heavier than your smaller project bags. And I just, I did a couple of experiments with um, little loopy things and they just, I didn't like the way they looked and I just felt like they were not sturdy enough long-term because this fabric is really nice and it'll last for a very long time. Um, oh, so my stitching is not perfect. Like I'm not a perfect seamstress. I'm trying but I'm not there yet. So you can see it looks very nice on this side, I think still, but you know, it's not perfect. Okay. Like don't millimeter me. <laughs> I'm very, very uptight because both of my, my mother and my grandmother, well, my grandmother was a professional seamstress, but they're both very exceptional seamstresses. So I judge myself with a very strict ruler. If I got this from somebody else though, I would not be upset, but I just want you to know that it's not 100% millimeter straight edge stitching. I don't fancy sewing machine like that. Um, but yeah. So I like to try to price it because this, this fabric is very expensive. It is a decorator fabric and it is at least three times more expensive than the nice quality quilters cottons. Like even the nice ones, it's three times more expensive than that. So I figure I looked at sweater bags to try to price them and they usually kind of run from anywhere from 45 to $55 plus shipping. Um, so that was kind of like the starting point. I figured my less than perfect seamstressness combined with the fact that this is a very simple bag. There's no, there's, there's line, it's lined and there's no seam showing, but it doesn't have pockets or anything fancy. So that combined that I thought kind of evened out the very expensive fabric. So, you paid me less, but paid more for the fabric. That's basically what I'm saying. So I think I'm going to charge $45 for them, but that'll include domestic shipping if I don't have to put it in Etsy. So if I don't have to go through the trouble of like photographing them and listing them and all that stuff, they'll be $45 including shipping. If I actually have to put them on Etsy, then they will be $10 more at least. No, they will be $10 more. Um, so yeah, if you want one, let me know. I have eight. This is so weird. I'm so Midwestern. Um, but if you want one, just let me know. Um, we'll say that if you want one uh, for, um, and you can, you can pay for it by a week from now. So if you can pay for it by Sunday, 
which is the six plus thirteenth. So if you can pay for it on PayPal between now and Sunday the thirteenth, just put a comment on the blog like, "Hey, I want one," and then you can either private message me or give me your Ravelry name, and I'll private message you or. So if you do that, if you do it on the blog, it'll be transparent so you can see like, oh, there's already eight people who want one and then you don't have to like fuss with it. Um, but go ahead and like, you know, even if there's eight people, put your name on if you really want one because somebody might not, somebody might think they want one and then the finance does not work out. Does that make sense? I feel so awkward. But anyway, they are available. There are eight of them. <laughs> I hope you have a lovely week. I hope that was not too weird. And um, yeah, I'll see you next time. Bye. Ooh, with a shoe review. Bye.